as, a, as she was talking about uh, the, the bishop, Pastor Jones pastored a great church in Chicago for many years, and from that church came many church planters. And so four years ago now, he retired and has given himself full time to traveling the country and um, helping to uh, in, encourage uh, church planting and, and evangelism. And he'll share more with you about that, but it is a, a delight to have in our pulpit this morning, Bishop Spencer Jones. Would you make him feel welcome as he comes this morning? Thank you. Thank you. What a blessing to be here. I feel electricity in this place. Boy, you don't often go to a place where you sense that presence of God, power of God, spirit of expectancy. So, boy, I rejoice with you. And uh, I'll to continue. The last week or so, I've been praying for you and with you. And that's the God will do more. I was here about 20 years ago. And I think I, this is my third time being here, and I've shared my testimony. I was born and raised on a farm in southern Missouri, right down from where his grandfather passed the church 14, 14 miles away. And I was, was shipped out to Vietnam in 1966. And I met a young white fellow, look almost like pastor here, ordered on to led me to the baptism of the Holy Spirit and encouraged me to go to Bible college. And, and out of that, I was sitting in chapel in Springfield, Missouri, and and, uh, and the guy came down from Chicago, got to watch that. And, and I never dreamed of living in Chicago because if you're born and raised in the area where he and I were from, you, you, you boy, the city doesn't ring with you. But I pastored that for 38 years. And I resigned. I didn't retire. A lot of guys think I retired, but I didn't retire. I resigned because God had been dealing with my heart 10 years early. God has helped us, and I want to underline that word, us, because you have helped us. We have planted 40 churches around America. Yes, all around America, all the way. In fact, we, we are going to be bringing a team up here to Orlando, Florida. We uh, start, uh, started a church there five years ago, and a guy came to our conference in Chicago back in uh, November, brought another guy with him, and out of that church, we started another church death about two months ago. So, you know, yes, the Lord has been good. And then we started a church, if, you, uh, if you're if Chicago and are from Chicago, crossed from White Sox Park, uh, a year ago, and that church had to move. We kept the building out. We came out with two churches, like having two babies at once. So we, we, whatever you will do to help us, you'll help us pay the note in a church in Orlando, and you'll help us pay the note in Chicago. So thank you very much. Amen. Well, take the Bible, God's Word, and what we stand is an act of reverence. Take the Bible, God's Word, and turn to Isaiah to Thank you, Pastor Kevin, for allowing me to be here. Allow me to be here during your week of fasting and prayer. I got excited about when you told me that. It says, verse 1, I'm going to read verse 1 through 8, I think. Word verse 1 through 8. But 6 to 8, verses 6 to 8 is our key verse. It said, shout aloud and do not hold back. Rise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sin. For the day after day, they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways. If they were a nation that does what is right and does not forsake the commandments of its God, they ask me for a just decision and seem eager to, for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed it? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do, you do as you please and exploit your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect, to, to be, expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day, a, man, a day for a man to humble himself. It is only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes. Is this what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not the, this kind of fast, is this the kind of fast that I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice, to untie the, untie the cords of the yoke, and to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke. Is not 
to share your food with the hungry and to pr provide the poor with one and with shelter. When you see the naked, you clothe him and not turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and healing will come quickly and appear. Your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Lord, we thank you that you're so great and so wonderful. We thank you for the wonderful people this week that have gathered in your house and prayed and fasted and cried out to you. We thank you for the great leader that you placed in this church. Thank you for his leadership and the touch of God that is on him. Now, Lord, I pray that you take every word I should say and every phrase I should honor, dear Lord. And I pray you anoint it, dear Lord. Help me to preach a word with purpose, with power, with authority, and most of all, with the anointing of God. And all God's people says, Amen. you may be seated. Today I want to talk to you about why do we fast and pray? Why do you and I set aside a time to fast and pray? Now, I, you to be a commitment. I We have done this in Chicago. I've done it for the last 40 years. Every year during the month of January, we've set aside a four or five days where we've humbled ourselves and we prayed and fasted and sought the face of God. I can tell you there's been some fundamental things I will share that as we go along that God has done over the period of time. In fact, we just did it this year. We, I look forward to it. I get excited about the time that week or three or four days that we set aside to fast and pray for the glory of God. The story is told about a young woman Jack, a guy who cut down tree, he uh, challenged the elder worker to a contest. He said, he said, I can chop down more trees than you in a day. So both of them started from sun up to sundown. They worked. And at the end of the day, the elderly gentleman had ch chopped down almost twice as many trees as the young guy. The young guy couldn't figure it out. He says, you know what? He said, I didn't take a break. I didn't sit down. I worked all day long. Every hour, the elderly gentleman had sat down, and what he did while he was sitting down, he was sharpening his axe on and on. And at the end of the contest, the guy said, how were you able to chop down more trees than me? He said, I sharpened my axe every hour. You know, fasting and praying allow you and I to sharpen our spiritual act for the glory of God. Amen. It allows us to connect with God in a way that we would not connect with God in any other way for the glory of God. You see in the book of Isaiah, the chapter 58th chapter, we have, an, a, a, mo, we have the most detail about fasting in any chapter in the whole Bible. And here the children of Israel had been fasting the wrong way. On and on. They had been boasting. They had pride. And a lot of things were going on. And God was not noticing their fast or God was not rewarding their fast. But God said, there is a fast that I've chosen. They're chosen. And God said, that's the time for a man to humble himself. How many know that you and I need to humble ourselves before God? You know, I discovered there are more pride in my life than I'd like to man. Hallelujah. All of us are full of some kind of pride. And fasting allows us to humble ourselves and say, God, you're great. You're wonderful. I need you. How many know that we need God? We need God on our job. We need God in our homes. We need God at every phase of our life for the glory of God. And fasting sends a message to God. It shows our sincerity. How many know that we need to show God that we're sincere for the glory of God? Amen. Now, now, what is fasting? Fasting and abstaining from food. Hallelujah. And if you're a lover of food like me, it really sends a match. Amen. It's abstaining for food, and we need to do that. Now, there are some reasons why we fast. We don't fast to get brownie, brownie points. We fast to commit ourselves to God. We fast to connect with God for the glory of God. We fast to tap into the supernatural. How many know there's a supernatural? Hallelujah. That brothers and sisters that are there that you and I can experience for the glory of God. Of God. Amen. We fast in obedience to the Word of God. Amen. How many know the Word in the Word of God is embedded? Fasting is embedded throughout the Bible. You will find the Bible mentioned about fasting. It's embedded in the Word of God. In, in uh, Matthew 6, 16, Jesus said he didn't want us to be like the scribes and Pharisees who fasted to be seen by men or to be heard.
work by men. But Jesus said, when you fast, he said, when you fast. Didn't say if you fast. said, when you fast for the glory of God. And then in Joel, the uh, second chapter, verse 4, and the Bible said, turn to me with all your heart. I come to me. How is God inviting us to come there? With fasting and with prayer for the glory of God. May you and I throughout the week, throughout the, throughout the year, not just the one time, thank the Lord that we started off with a week and a time of fast. But how many know it should become a part of our lives? Hallelujah. But it should become a part of our lives throughout the year. In fact, I am so excited this year more than ever year before. I've done it for 40 years. I've determined that at least once a month, I'm going to have a one day, a two day, a three day fast for the glory of God. Because I need to see God. I need to experience God. I need a breakthrough in my life. I need a breakthrough in my ministry. I need the presence and the power and the glory of God to invade my life and to invade my ministry for the glory of God. And so do you say amen. Amen. There are, there are many benefits. There, there are many benefits to fasting. The Bible outlines them for the glory of God. May you and I rise in the name of Jesus and ask God to give us a mind. How many know it starts with a mind? Amen. It starts with the mind. Ask God, God, give me a mind to set aside a day. I set aside a three days. I set aside a week where I can humble myself and fast for the glory of God. It starts with a mind. I need to recognize the Lord expect me to fast for the glory of God from time to time. I need that for the glory of God. Has the Holy Spirit spoken to you lately about setting aside a time of fasting and prayer? He will for the glory of God if you and I will be open to him for the glory of God. He'll do that. There's nothing like it for the glory of God. Yesterday, I've, uh, I've set aside a time that I'm going to exercise more this year than ever before. You know why I'm going to do that? Because there are benefits in exercise. Just as there are benefits to physical exercise, there are benefits to spiritual fasting for the glory of God. Amen. Fasting shows how sincere we are about God. When I grew up as a child, I loved to eat. I'd eat like a hog. i tell you what, I'd eat and eat, eat, eat. The only time I can convince my father that not to make me go to the fields and work is I convinced my father that I was really sick. I didn't eat. Amen. Any other time, if I told him that I was sick and I was kept eating, he would never believe me. Amen. But when I said, I don't want nothing to eat, I'm not eating at all, my father said, he's sincere. Hallelujah. And I believe that sometimes God knows that we and I are sincere when you and I turn our plate down, when we'll fast for the glory of God. I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you as a Christian throughout the year to fast and pray for your home for your church, for your family, for your relatives, for your loved one, for a move of God, for the glory of God. May God give us a heart and mind to do it for the glory of God. Jesus said, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away, and then they shall fast in those days. So what is he saying? He expects us to fast. He expects us to fast. Hallelujah. May the good Lord help us to rise in the name of Jesus and do it. And then fasting not only is obedience to the word of God, but fasting breaks yokes in the lives of Christians and in the lives of our loved ones. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. My loved ones are in trouble. I don't know about you. I got loved ones that, that are chained to every habit you can think of. I got loved ones that are lost. I got loved ones that are going through difficult times. And I want to see God invade my family. Hallelujah. In fact, you know what I did? Uh, uh, just two weeks ago, I caught an Amtrak from Chicago to Papa Bluff, Missouri to fast and pray with my brothers and sisters. Fasting and praying has impact with God. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to rise in the name of Jesus. How many know that you and I, there are yokes in our lives that need to be broken? Hallelujah. Things that you and I have struggled with, whether it's gossip, uh, whether it's uh, gambling, whether whatever it is, whether it's cigarette smoking or whatever, there are yokes in our lives that need to be broken for the glory of God. God. And in fasting and praying, it allows God, the supernatural power of God, to invade our life for the glory of God. Amen. I had a, a business administrator who worked with me for 
20 years and as a child she said she started uh, smoking as a child and she tried hard and hard to quit it and could not quit it about 10 years ago in our time of fasting and praying that desire for cigarette just went away for the glory of God how many know that God can take away that desire God can break that yoke in our life I would encourage you to rise in the name of Jesus and fast and pray and say God I don't want to be in bondage to depression and discouragement or anything I want to be free. Hallelujah. How many of God want us to be free for the glory of God? Hallelujah. May the good Lord help us to rise in the name of Jesus. I said, first of all, fasting is an obedience to God's word. Fasting breaks the yokes in our lives and in the lives of our loved ones. And fasting, not only that, fasting helps us find a solution to problems. How many know we face problems? And how many know we face complex problems? Ezra was facing that kind of problem. It said Ezra, in Ezra, the 8th chapter, verses 22 through 23, so, so we fast and entreated our God for the answer to our prayers. Hallelujah. How many know it's time to fast and pray about the problem? Not only the problem that you may be facing, the problem we're facing in America. How many know we're facing problems in America for the glory? We need a revival in America. I heard a report the other day that in America, 65,000 people died of an overdose of drugs in America. That's alarming. How many know that's alarming? Hallelujah. It's time for us to see a need to fast and pray for solution. I face problems. You face problems. You face problems in your home with your children. You face problems that you need a solution to. You need some insight to. You need a breakthrough. You need God to do something supernaturally for the glory of God. Am I the only one? Hallelujah. I'd like to think there are others that need a solution to problems that you're facing. Amen. As I said, we fasted and we prayed and we sought our God. And you know what he said? God answered us. And you know what he said? God answered it. How many know God answered prayer? How many know God answered sincere prayer? How many know that God answered the prayer of faith and confidence? Hallelujah. Our God is a supernatural God. Hallelujah. Our God is a God that hears us. He hears us. He hears us when we cry out in desperation. He hears us when we pray. He hears us for the glory of God. May God give us a sense of desperation. May you and I cry out to God for our loved ones, for our friends, for the community, for people that are lost for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. There are people that are lost that need to come in. May the good Lord help us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. There are three things that cause us problems. Would to God that we didn't have any problems, but if you keep, uh, all of us got problems. How many know that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, all of us got problems. And I often tell people, is that, you know what? There, there are three areas of, that we deal with problems. One is, you're in the middle of a problem right now. Are you you're on your way out? Or are you getting ready to come in? Let me say that again. You're in three places. One or three places. You're getting ready to go into one. You're in the middle of one, or you're on your way out. You know what? We jump and shout when we're on our way out. Yeah. Hallelujah. We praise God when we're on our way out. But how many know God wants us to have the victory? Hallelujah. Right in the middle of it for the glory of God. God wants us. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. How many know that God will give you strength right in the middle of it? How many know that God has the answer to every problem that you face, every problem that family face? But God wants to reveal that. And many times that revelation, that insight comes through prayer for the glory of God. Hallelujah. May the good Lord help us to rise in the name of Jesus. So I swear I might stand. I've said three things that cause a problem. Change. When there's a change that happens in the home or, or on the job or in the church, there's always a problem that will arise. And we need God's help. And when there's a disagreement with a friend, with a relative, with your wife, or with somebody, but how many know God has a solution? Yeah. Hallelujah. May God help us to rise in the name of Jesus. Not only that, in circumstance, when I surround this, uh, in circumstance, cause a problem. We built a church in Chicago about this side, uh, back in the uh, er, 
uh, middle 90s, early 90s, and we'd gone to the lender to borrow some money. And the, the building was going to cost us one point. Uh, uh, one point two million dollars on and on, and then after we started building, it almost doubled the price. Almost doubled. We ran out of money, and when we got the walls up, we didn't have enough money to put the roof on, and uh, the roof stayed open for almost two years. The lender said, "I am not going to let you have any more money. That's it." But brothers and sisters, the week of fasting and praying, we sought God, and after that week of fasting and praying, the lender said, "I'll let you have twice as much money." For the glory of God. Our God is an awesome God. He want to set a breakthrough in your life, in your home. He want to give the solution to the problem that you're having with your children. He want to give the solution to the problem that you're having with your husband. He want to give a solution to the problem that you're having with your neighbor. Let's arise in the name of Jesus and say, this is going to be the year that I'm going to fast and pray and seek the face of God. It's not going to be just one time experience. It's not just going to be in January. I'm going to do something in February. I'm going to do something in March. I'm going to do something in May, uh, March and April and throughout the year. Why? Because I need God to work in my life, work in my family, work in our church for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. May the good Lord help us to recognize that, God, I need your insight. I need your insight. I need a revelation. Hallelujah. I need a solution to the problem. It says in 2 Chronicles 23, Joseph was afraid and turned his attention to seeking the Lord and proclaim the fast. God help us to do that. Amen. Fasting, uh, fasting not only is embedded in the word of God. No, no, no. Are we commanded to fast? Not only do brothers and sisters that you and I find a solution to our problem in fasting, not only does fasting break yokes and strongholds in our lives, but fasting help us to overcome besetting sins in our lives. How many know we all have weaknesses? Am I talking to anybody that don't have weaknesses? Hallelujah. We all have weaknesses. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, how many know that Satan likes to keep us down? He likes to keep us defeated because as long as you and I are defeated, we're not going to do much for God. Let me say it again. As long as you and I are defeated and discouraged and defeated and discouraged, we're not going to do much for God. Hallelujah. But when we got the victory, how many know God wants us to walk in victory? How many know that God, the Bible said we are more than conquerors. Do I have any conquerors in here? Hallelujah. Do we have people that say, God, this is going to be the year that I'm going to overcome every weakness, every difficulty, every trial, every, every little weakness in my life. I'm focused for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. That can happen through times of fasting and praying. Or run, I, from time to time, early in my life, Early in my Christian life, I'd find myself saying things and, and doing things to people that wasn't Christian. Or I'm not proud of that. But it was through fasting and praying that God broke that change. How many know God break changes? He'll break changes in your life. He'll help you to deal with the weaknesses. Hallelujah. Whether the weakness is gossip, whether the weakness is gambling every now and then, doesn't matter whether the weakness is pornography, doesn't matter what it is. Hallelujah. Our God can break the yoke. Hallelujah. Uh, you don't have to walk away. You don't have to get discouraged. You don't have to surrender. There's power. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, there's power in the word of God. There's power in fasting and praying and seeking the face of God. I urge you, I plead with you, let's make this a year of constant fast and in prayer because we want to see God. We want to see the power. We want to experience the power of God. We want to see the supernatural in our lives, in our family's lives. We want strongholds to be broken in our lives for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. God, help us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God want us to be victorious. Amen. When was the last time you overcame a weakness in your life. May the good Lord help us to focus this year. Say, God, next year, I don't want to be in this situation. I want to be higher. I want to be stronger. Hallelujah. I want to be more victorious. Do I, am I talking to anybody in here today? Glory to God. I want to be deeper. Hallelujah. I want to be stronger. Hallelujah. I want to touch more lives. Amen. But as long as Satan can change us, he keeps us down. Amen? 
the fourth thing, because the church is in desperate need of revival. American church, the local church. And I thank God for this church. And I'm going to say something. I'm going to say that you should value what God is doing here. You say, I get the privilege of traveling all across America. And I get the privilege of observing churches all across America. Hold it on. And I served on Executive Presbytery in Springfield for four years. Hold it on. And the, the, the report would come back from time to time. Half of our churches in America couldn't report one convert. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, that's tragic. How many know that's tragic? That doesn't bring glory out of God. Amen. But brothers and sisters, our, ch- our altars are empty. Our, our, our people getting saved and filled and healed and delivered and miracles are not happening. But when we fast and pray, it brings out God's power. It brings out God's glory. I want to encourage you to keep a spirit of expectancy all year long. You fasted. You have sought God. And all year long, let's walk in a spirit of expectancy. Let's come here Sunday after Sunday. Week after week, expecting somebody to walk down and give their life to Jesus. Expecting somebody to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Expecting somebody to be healed and delivered. Expecting a miracle. Expecting a supernatural. Expecting God's presence. There is nothing like God's presence. Church without God's presence is no church at all. But when God's presence is there, it brings life. It brings power. It brings God's presence. It brings God's anointing. It brings healing. It brings miracles. It brings wonders for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In Acts, the third chapter, verse 19, that you may experience a time of refreshing from the presence of God. How many know that we need a time of refreshing? On and on, when we when I grew up on the farm, and it would get hot every now and then, and or I would go a long time without a rain. But when that rain would come in, yeah. there's nothing like a rain. Yeah. There's nothing like the presence of God. When it invades a church, when it invades a life. Oh God, how many of the church need a rain? Need an outpouring. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Need a time, a time of refreshing. Hallelujah. Not only the church individual. Hallelujah. We need an individual revival. Hallelujah. May the good Lord quicken our heart for the glory of God. I hear that scripture say, if my people who call by my name will humble themselves. What is humble themselves? Fast and hallelujah. And pray and seek my faith. Then will I hear from heaven. And then I will heal their land. Hallelujah. How many know God wants to pour out his spirit? How many know that? That God wants to heal. How many know that God wants to work a miracle? Let's expect that for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. May the good Lord help us to rise in the name of Jesus and believe God. Hallelujah. Here's some things that churches can experience as we fast the wonders of God. How many know that God wants to do signs and wonders? You can expect that. Hallelujah. You can, first assembly, you can expect that. Let me just say this on and on. You know, this is the first church I've gone into in a long time where they've set aside a week of fasting and praying. Brother, sister, thank God. Hallelujah. And what am I saying? Let's expect the wonders of God. Let's, let's, let's expect the wonders of God. Let's expect signs and wonders and miracles for the glory of God. And let me just encourage it through this period. Let's be sensitive to God. Hallelujah. How many know that God wants to speak and God wants to reveal himself? Let's be sensitive to God for the glory of God. And how many know, ex- let's expect growth. Hallelujah. How many know that God wants to add to his church? That's part of revival. It said God added to the church daily for the glory of God. Some churches can go a whole year without one convert, but I believe with my heart, I can believe with my heart that you're going to have many converts that will find Jesus as the Lord and Savior this year as a result of you fasting and praying and crying out to God. I urge you throughout this year to make this a time and a season of fasting and praying. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's keep a spirit of anticipation. Let's keep a spirit of expectation. Hallelujah. Fasting and praying, the, the things that the church experienced, they can experience a unity, a spirit of oneness. That's what we need to pray, that God make us one, one in spirit. Hallelujah. May the good Lord, hallelujah, make that happen. So what am I saying to you? 
why have your pastor set aside a time for you to fast and pray? First of all, because he knows the power of fasting and prayer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because he wants you to experience the supernatural presence and power of God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Because he wants to bring this church in obedience to the command of God. God says, come. Hallelujah. Come to me with fasting and prayer. Jesus said, when you fast. Not if you fast. But when you fast. God has to help us rise than anybody else. And God doesn't want us to be yoked with the burdens and all the trials and hardships on and on. God, there are some that experience a spirit of depression over and over again. How I many know that yoke can be broken? Hallelujah. Yoke of fear, fear that plagues believers. That yoke can be broken. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And the solution to our problems, the solution to the problems in your home and, and that kind of thing. And, and besetting sin. God wants us to overcome every besetting sin. And then God wants to send an outpouring for the glory of God. Let's stand. Today, I, I want to give out an altar call. Oh, no, this is how, how it'll go. Let's bow our heads all over the building today. If you're here and you're not right with God and you say, Pastor Jones, I want to get right with God. I want to know that if I die today, I'd go to heaven. I'd have eternal life. Would you pray for me? I want to get right with God. Oh, Lord, this may be your first time or you may have come a number of times and you're not right with God and you say, Pastor Jones, would you pray for me? I want to get right with God. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord is there one here today for the glory of God? Praise the name of the Lord. And then the other area that I want to join you in prayer that says, I just want God to give me a mind to pray throughout, to fast and pray throughout the year. Oh, yes, yeah, thank the Lord for this week. It's been a dynamite week. It's been a wonderful week. But I want to be a, I want the fasting to be a part of my Christian life. Or on. That's one area we want to pray with you. The other area of praying, you said, Pastor Jones, I find myself yoke, or there's a yoke in my life. I want it broken. I want it broken. I want the freedom and liberty. I want to be able to triumph for the glory of God. And the other area I want to pray with you, you said, Pastor Jones, I'm facing a problem. It's huge. It's big. I just need a breakthrough. I need a supernatural breakthrough. And then the other area, or on, that I want to pray with you. He said, Pastor John, I, I'm struggling with this besetting sin. I, I just keep every now and then I go back to it. I, I'm tripped up by it, or on. Every now and then I go back. I'm not going to ask you what it is. That, that's not my job. But I want to pray with you. He said, Pastor Jones, that seemed to be a dryness in my Christian life. I need to experience a time of refreshing. You need prayer for any one of those. Just step out and come on down. I'm going to pray a mass prayer. Just step out and come on down. I'll pray with you. Just step out and come on down. Order on to, just, yeah, just step out. Don't be afraid. See, we can come right to the house of God. Come step out and come on down. Just step out and come on. I'm going to pray. Order on. We're going to have a mass of prayer. Just step out and come down. Yes, yeah, step out and come on. You need a miracle of healing, anything. You need a miracle, whatever it is, I'm going to pray. We're going to lay hands on people. Hallelujah. We're going to leave it in group of prayer. Glory to God. Step out and come on down. Step out and uh, come on down. Step out and come on down. Yes, sir. Come on, sir. Come on. Come on. Step out and come on down. Way, thank you, dude. Glory to God. There are others that need to step out and come on down. Don't be afraid. Today could be the day of your miracle. Today could be the day of your breakthrough. Today could be a day of your healing. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on down. We thank you, dear Lord. Glory to God. Yeah. Glory to God. We thank you, dear Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me just lead them in a general word of prayer then. Yeah. I'm just going to lead you in a general word of prayer, and then I'm going to come by and lay hands on you. Wonderful. Just, just raise your hand. Say, Jesus, thank you for your word. I heard your word. I believe in you for supernatural touch in my life. Right now, I need freedom from every problem. I need strength. I need a miracle. I need a breakthrough. I need to experience a time of refreshing. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I need yokes broken in my life, in my family's life. In the name of Jesus, give me a breakthrough. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Satan, I renounce you. I renounce you. I renounce your spirit. I renounce your grip. 
I renounce it in the name of Jesus. And I claim freedom, liberty, victory in the name of Jesus.